In this video, I will be making potassium dichromate from old cutlery which is made up of stainless steel. Stainless steel contain around 16-18% to 18 chromium. Taking this into consideration, I have made all the measurements. So first we have to convert the chromium into chromium 3 oxide. So for that there are two methods. One is the electrolysis method and second is the chemical method. So first I will show you the electrolysis method. For that in a beaker I took 150 ml water and added sodium hydroxide to make it conducting. Then I took a fork and a spoon and immersed it in the solution and connected it to a 18 watt AC to DC adapter. Electrolysis has started but no corrosion of anode is happening. So I am adding one spoon of sodium chloride in this solution. On adding sodium chloride, anode starts to corrode. The metal in the steel which is iron and chromium is oxidizing to their corresponding hydroxides. I have already dissolved two fork heads and one spoon by this method, which measures out to be 33 grams. I will show you the precipitate form later in this video. Now I will show you the chemical method. For that I am adding 36 gram stainless steel which includes cutlery left from electrolysis process into this 250 ml flat bottom flask to this i added 250 ml of 5 molar hcl and set the apparatus on reflux when the reaction went vigorous i switched off the heating mantle it foamed but didn't came out of the condenser so over here, iron and chromium is reacting with hydrochloric acid to form iron 2 chloride and chromium chloride respectively with evolution of hydrogen gas. Now after all the acid has reacted with steel and even on heating no evolution of hydrogen gas takes place, the reaction is over. Now in the left beaker I have a precipitate of iron and chromium hydroxide which I made from electrolysis. And on the right in the flask I have a solution of chromium chloride and iron 2 chloride. The solution foamed out of the condenser due to my carelessness. So I lost some of it. Now in a 500 ml beaker I took 50 gram of NaOH which is equivalent to the acid used. Dissolved it in distilled water and then with constant stirring I poured all the solution in it. This converts the soluble iron 2 chloride and chromium chloride into ferrous hydroxide and chromium hydroxide. I checked the pH and it showed that it was highly basic. Then I took the precipitate obtained via electrolysis and filtered it by my DIY Birkner funnel by vacuum filtration. Even on vacuum filter, the filtration was very slow and took hours to filter. Had it been gravity filtration, it would take days. After filtration, I transferred the precipitate to the beaker. Then I filtered my precipitate made by chemical method. The precipitate was excess, so I added only half the amount into the Buckner funnel and washed the precipitate with water to remove soluble salts. This precipitate was also combined with the previous precipitate. With the leftover suspension, I added water, let it sediment and decanted of the supernatant liquid. I repeated this washing step three times to remove the soluble salts. Then I combined the washed distillery with the washed precipitates. Now we have to convert chromium hydroxide into sodium chromate. That is oxidizing chromium from plus 3 oxidation state to plus 6 oxidation state. For that, to this slurry, I am adding sodium hydroxide solution, which is prepared by dissolving 19 gram of sodium hydroxide in 20 to 30 ml water. Now I attached a stirrer to stir this slurry, but it wasn't effective as the slurry was thick and viscous. Manual stirring was required. Then I placed 100 ml 6% hydrogen peroxide in a separating funnel and added 6% hydrogen peroxide in the slurry drop wise with constant stirring. First I manually stirred the mixture but as addition of hydrogen peroxide diluted the slurry, stirring became easier. So over here 
hydrogen peroxide is first used in the oxidation of ferrous hydroxide to ferric hydroxide then according to theory it should oxidize chromium hydroxide to sodium chromate here i added around 300 ml hydrogen peroxide the volume became large so i transferred the solution into a larger beaker after adding 300 ml hydrogen peroxide on further addition vigorous foaming started taking place so i thought reaction was over and all the chromium hydroxide would have been converted to sodium chromate but in actual it was just catalytic decomposition of hydrogen peroxide into oxygen by ferric hydroxide before it could react with chromium hydroxide the supernatant liquid was only very light yellow indicating very small amount of chromate present so after wasting my time and hydrogen peroxide i decided to try another method of oxidation which is also used in the manufacture of potassium dichromate from chromite ore so i transferred all the suspension into my 1 liter trough and left it in the sun to evaporate to dryness after few days all the solution dried up i crushed these chunks and transferred this powder into a steel bowl then i will be heating the powder on a bunsen burner and stir it with a spatula first the hydroxides will be converted into oxides but i realized that the bowl was too small for this so i transferred the powder into a bigger bowl and started heating The sodium hydroxide in our slurry has been converted into sodium carbonate by reacting with carbon dioxide in the air. I heated this mixture to red hot. The chromium oxide and sodium carbonate react together in presence of oxygen of air to form sodium chromate. Wikipedia says that reaction temperature should be thousand to one thousand and hundred degrees Celsius. I don't know whether I was successful in reaching that temperature throughout the mixture or not. Anyways, I took this powder, I added it to 100 ml water and stirred it for some time, and we see some yellow color. I filtered this off using vacuum filtration, and yes, we got some yellow chromate. I washed the precipitate several times until the filtrate started coming colorless. Then I poured the solution into a 250 ml beaker and concentrated the solution to less than around 100 ml. On cooling, some crystals were formed, but I doubt if they were of chromate. Now to convert it into dichromate, I am adding 14 ml of glacial acetic acid to it. The reason I chose acetic acid over sulfuric acid or hydrochloric acid is that. Sulfates of potassium and sodium are less soluble in cold water, so they may crystallize out on cooling. And hydrochloric acid, if occurs to be in excess, would react with dichromate to form chlorine and chromium chloride. And even if we add hydrochloric acid very accurately, the high concentration of chloride would crystallize potassium chloride or sodium chloride out of solution. Sodium and potassium acetates are highly soluble in water. so therefore i chose acetic acid for this purpose i added the acetic acid slowly first it reacted with unreacted sodium carbonate to give carbon dioxide and then on further acidification the solution turned orange i added 1 ml acetic acid in excess and checked the ph it was around 5 to 6 which is due to the buffer formed by acetic acid and sodium acetate produced in situ even on adding excess acid ph didn't go lower i heated this solution so that all the solids would dissolve and simultaneously dissolved 18 g of potassium chloride in 50 ml distilled water after the solution was prepared i added this solution into the sodium dichromate solution initially nothing happened as solution was very hot but on keeping the beaker in ice bath for some time orange crystals of potassium dichromate were formed as potassium dichromate has very low solubility in ice cold water that is 5 g per 100 ml at 0 degree celsius i filtered these crystals on my buchner funnel on vacuum filtration and washed the crystals with ice cold 
distilled water. Then I took out the crystals with a spatula in a pre-weighed petri dish and dried these crystals in a desiccator for two days. After drying, yield came around to be 10 gram. The theoretical yield being 35 gram, which corresponds to a percentage yield of 28.5 percent. 7.5 gram of potassium dichromate would still be there in the solution. Taking that into account, the conversion was only 50 percent of the theoretical. Thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions, please write down in the comment section and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you like my work, you can support me financially through Patreon and PayPal. Links are given in description.